My next guest is a MacArthur Genius Fellow and a best selling author. Please welcome George Saunders. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Nice to see you. You too. Um, how does that uh, that whole MacArthur genius thing feel? You know, when people call you like you're officially a genius now, according to some people who gave you some cash. Do you yeah. like to throw that in people's face? Oh, very much. Very really? Much. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping I... to get it a second time so I can kind of really live it up. Again. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Are there ever twofers on that? No. No, really? <laughs> Never. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. Did, what, yeah. did you run through the cash already? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. We, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're one of my favorite literary guests and one of my favorite Thanks. authors. Thanks. But you don't, you actually, you don't look that much like an author. Right now, you look like a biker in a tie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a bit of a Muppet, maybe. A Muppet, little, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, yeah. a, a imagine, Muppet in a tie. I can imagine Henson with his hand up you right now. <laughs> but, but don't. <laughs> don't, I won't, don't. I, yeah, won't. No. I won't. We'll do that later. Um, yeah. you've, you've got, you're re releasing right now one, one wonderful book called The Very Persistent Gappers of Fripp. Yeah. And this is written for children. Yeah. It's a children's book. Yeah. Um, do you believe there is such a thing as like children's books versus adult books? Because I interviewed Maurice Sendak a few years ago. And, and he said he didn't write children's books. He just said he wrote books, and somebody said, this is for right. children. Right. So do you think, what do you think the difference is when, when you write a book? Well, when I wrote this one, my idea was that uh, adult literature was kind of like cautionary. You know, it was there to remind, especially in a culture like ours, which is so affluent, to kind of uh, remind us that, that just because stuff is good for us, it's not good for everybody else, and it, it might not be good for us forever. So it's kind of a somber kind of cautionary thing. But with kids, uh, I, I wrote this for my daughters. I, I, uh, so I thought, well, what they maybe need to hear is sort of like a, like a radical defense of tenderness, like the fact that uh, the world does sometimes go bad, but when it does, we have resources. So f what that meant for me was instead of having a big, disastrous, murderous ending, it ha had to have a happy ending, you know, which was kind of new for me. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like the idea of what's called radical tenderness. Yeah, yeah. What do you, what do you mean by well, that? Well, I mean, my, my take on it is, I don't know, our, our world has become, in my lifetime, uh, more materialist, more analytical, more fact-based, uh, more shareholder honoring, you know, kind of a gradual shift to the rational side of things. Uh -huh. uh, and I think, you know, actually what we, what we need to understand is that our gifts, our real powerful gifts, our love, tenderness, patience, and so on. So uh, it's possible that in one, a couple of generations, those things that we kind of grew up on could drift out of the picture. So especially, you know, when I w was writing this, what I would do is, uh, well, I'm a really control freak writer. Like I do hundreds of drafts. And I'm, it's, I'm, well, I've got this, the discipline of a short story really is really all about cruel. control. And I've got this like inner nun, you know, that's like, <laughs> That's that sucks. Well, they wouldn't they wouldn't say suck, but they would say that that's that's inferior. That's disappointing, George. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, don't do, oh. It's disappointing, you, George. You almost sent me into a flashback just now. <laughs> but but so so the the writing process for adults was really rigorous and really you know kind yeah. of OCD. So when our daughters were little, every so often I would just go in and improvise, which f for me was really thin ice. You know, I'd just go in and make Improvise a story? Yeah, just, oh, yeah. you know, no, no revising allowed there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what was interesting was they're, they're such wonderful girls. And so when you're improvising a story, you can gauge the audience and you can see what they prefer. Mm -hmm. So over the years, the stories that I tended to tell them were kind of like not, uh, well, Nobody died, for one. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a lot of crushing of enemies. It was more like the, the, the little girl in the story would have a problem, would solve it, and then would kind of look back and help her enemies, you know, kind of redeem her enemies. Well, that's what happens in yeah, this. Yeah, there's a little... character capable. Yeah. Yeah, the enemies aren't crushed. Everybody's happy in the end. Right, they turn on her, and then she, at a certain moment, she thinks, ah, you know, I can win, or I can win and go back and, and help them as well. So that was kind of the, you know... Do you think that nonfiction can be friendly. I'll tell you the reason why, is that I read a lot of nonfiction books, yep. but I also read a ton of fiction when I, was, when I was younger. And I used to think of those fiction books as my friend. Not the characters, but mm -hmm. literally the book, the book. was yeah, yeah, my yeah. friend. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because I had a relationship yes. with the book. Yes. Can nonfiction do that? Sure. I, because I think the reason you felt that when you were young is, this is weird, but, but prose, when it's done right, is kind of like an, uh, it's like empathy training wheels. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so first of all, I'm writing a character. I usually, when you start, you're writing down. You're making fun of somebody. You're giving them some really obvious defects that you can kick around. 
Well, the story form doesn't like that. It feels like you're, uh, you're, you're condescending. So in rewriting, you bring the character up. You make it more like yourself, smarter, uh, sharper, you know. So in that sense, you're building empathy between you and the character. Meanwhile, I'm writing to you, and you're kind of watching me to see how much I respect your intelligence. Like if I put in a bunch of empty phrases, for example, uh, you're going to think, why does he think so little of me? Why is he wasting, wasting my time? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you had a, you know, a, something like uh, Bob came into the room and sat down on the brown couch. Perfectly good English sentence. Yeah. Well, uh, the inner nun would say, why does he have to come into the room? Can't he already be in the room? Okay, so you cut that out. Uh, Bob sat down on the brown couch. Can you sit up on a couch? No, sister, you can't. So you cut that. Uh, and then you're, Bob sat on the brown couch. Why does it have to be brown? Bob sat on the couch. Why is he sitting on the couch? <laughs> and then you cut it. You just have Bob. <laughs> but, but it Eventually, doesn't... Eventually, <laughs> don't you have to ask the nun to leave the room? So you do. You do. You do. The main character, the main character capable um, in this, she has, she says she has, it's not at all that much fun being the sort of person who eats a big dinner in a warm house while others shiver. Why, why does she say that? Well, she's gotten to that place where she's kind of solved her problem, and meanwhile, her neighbors are out there with their problem unsolved. And it's kind of the moment where a different story would say, well, too bad, you know, too bad. But for her, she kind of says, ah, this is not as fun as I thought it would be, so I got to kind of, you know, bring them in and include them. I understand that you actually wrote a song associated with that moment in the book. I did. I, had a, I loved writing this book, and I had kind of a creative overflow, so I wrote a bunch of songs. Okay. Yeah, would, you, yeah. would you mind? I, I'm a little intimidated, because with this band, this is like having sex in front of porn stars. It's kind of... <laughs> I, 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 all right, I'll try, all right, but, but we'll, we'll try it? Yeah, okay, sure, sure, all right, sure. we'll try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, all right. Actually, when you think of that, this will be e relatively easy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you going to help me? What? You're going to help me? Like ju jump in? Yeah, jump in, please. The way we rehearsed before the show? Something like that okay, would okay. be good. Or, or even more would okay, be nice. You start. Oh. You start. Okay. I, I'll, 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 I'll see will. what I All can right. do. Okay. Ready for this? Area. There are days in this life, the sun shining bright when we see. What God intended But that kind, clear sun Can't warm everyone Oh, today is a beautiful day But not for you All my life I've lived right By day and by night Now at last I am Rewarded. I worked hard to get where I got. As for you, apparently not. Oh, today is a beautiful day, but not for you. Not for you, just for me. Everything's fine, far as I can see. Oh, the world is a beautiful place, and it keeps getting better. As for you, whatever you did, too bad for you, kid. Oh, today is a beautiful day, but not for you. Oh, today is a beautiful day in every way. Oh, today is a beautiful day, but not for you. George Saunders. The very persistent gaffers of Fred. We'll be right back. George, what a treat. Thank you.